National Chief, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here today. NAFTA is sometimes seen as expanding resource extraction in Canada on Indigenous territories. What consultations have you had with your executive or other First Nations? Well, just regarding this, it came up last week during our assembly, so I brought it forward to some of our members on our Chiefs Committee on Economic Development and the portfolio holder, uh, Regional Chief Chapman, so I had a dialogue with them. I also talked to each of my regional chiefs uh, individually about it, and uh, everybody viewed it as an opportunity to get First Nations voices to that table. Uh, we've never been involved in any international trade agreement dialogue or discussions in any way, shape, or form, so a lot of them viewed it as an opportunity now that should, we should take advantage of. Um, even the same thing I've always said applies to Fed Prov tables, whether the federal government, provincial governments are talking about health care, our education, the economy, the environment, First Nations voices need to be there. It's not any different on international trade agreements. The council is made up of people from all political stripes with the goal to have a unified Team Canada approach to renegotiations. Why do you think this is something First Nations should get on board for? Well, again, as a uh, First Nations person, I, I think when you look at the, the group of people that's there, we're all trying to work together for a best deal for, for Canada. And for me, I'm bringing Indigenous knowledge to the table. Um, you know, for Canada-U.S. Uh, trade relations, uh, for us as Indigenous peoples, there were no borders. We've been crossing the border for centuries. Um, I think of some of the original agreements we have that are nation to nation. We have the international agreement through the Jay Treaty. And uh, so I'm going to bring all of that knowledge to the table. Um, you know, we have Aboriginal rights and title, we have treaty rights, uh, we have jurisdiction, uh, we have the UN Declaration, so everything should be looked at through a rights lens, but it's basically ultimately getting a, a good deal for Canadian people right across coast to coast to coast, including First Nations people. As you mentioned, Indigenous people were consulted when NAFTA was first negotiated. How can you make uh, sure that there's a benefit to them in the future? Well, again, just having our voices there. We've never been there before, and, uh, and I've said not only through NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, uh, but you also have CETA, you have TPP, you have FIPA, all these international trade agreements. And uh, I've, I've always said that indigenous peoples need to be at those tables. Uh, we always bring the balance between the economy and the environment. Uh, we also bring the idea that we can look at green energy solutions that could be exported. Uh, we have a number of First Nations that are talking about international trade agreements uh, between Indigenous peoples from throughout the world. Um, we have oil and gas producers that want to find good markets for their products. We have the whole softwood lumber issue from northern BC where First Nations people need a good price for their product as well. Um, I think of the Ring of Fire and, and the Mattawa Tribal Council. I think of Reg Belrose and Muskaugan with potash developments, you know. So we, we've, we're looking at international trade from a First Nations perspective and, and basic message is we need to be involved. Do you feel there's any conflict of interest here working so closely for a federal government that many First Nations are currently at odds with? I always say you've got to bring everybody together. I think it's better to be inside the tent than outside the tent. And, uh, and I've also said that uh, my involvement in, in no way relieves the Crown of their duty to consult and accommodate obligations. That my involvement in no way alleviates them of free prior informed consent obligations via the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Uh, my involvement again is provide un, unfettered, unsolicited advice to, to the Minister, Krisha Freeland, uh, about this. And, and uh, for for sure, I as a First Nations person will always bring things from a rights lens, you know, Aboriginal rights and title, uh, treaty rights, and again to make sure that uh, if there are opportunities for economic development that First Nations people have a say in that and involvement in that, and as well balancing uh, all of the international trade agreements with respect for the environment and land and water. It's value added to me. National Chief, thanks for taking the time to join us here. Thanks for the opportunity.